Hey everybody, Jason Yee here from Trade 2.0, and in this video we're going to go over the slingshot shooting system and how to shoot more like Elias Pedersen, and so we're going to break down his mechanics here, and uh, where we're at is we're at week three. Now if you missed week one and two, you're going to want to catch those. Week one, we talked about removing the pebble in your shoe, unlearning unnatural mechanics that are holding you back. Uh, week two is about installing natural mechanics, and that was last week. This week is about a cue known as grabbing the ice. Now weeks four, five, and six are in the slingshot shooting system, part of a six-week transition from that lean and push, stiff old shot with old sticks to the fast and whippy and relaxed new slingshot that comes from new sticks. So we're going to break down... Um, Pedersen's release here and a cue called grabbing the ice and then we're going to look at how that factors into uh, a few other shots with a few other NHLers. Okay, so let's jump into this. So what is grabbing the ice? Now the key here is leverage and the question is do you use the ice and puck to give you leverage or are you leaning into your stick or are you staying really stiff and trying to push the puck to the net? Because if you're using the ice and the puck to give yourself leverage, the stick flex that everyone is so excited about happens naturally. And it happens naturally thanks to new stick technology. So to get leverage, you want to do something that we call grabbing the ice. And there's one, two, three steps. The first step is place the puck on your forehand in, in, in some way. The second step is keep your blade mostly in place while both hands move towards the net. And then step three is when your hands are extended, you're going to pull your top hand into your body, chest, or hip. The cue is you want to let your blade of the, uh, with, that's on the puck lag behind your hands. Okay, so let's take a look at Pedersen's shot here. And let's take a look at step one. Step one is get the puck on your forehand. Okay, he's done that. Step two is you want to keep the blade on the ice while the hands move towards the net. And you'll notice that the, the, the blade doesn't actually move that far. Notice how the blade moves forward a little bit, but the hands really are the, are the part that's shooting out. Okay, so that's, that's step two. Now step three is you're gonna now and this is where people get messed up because they hear the cue hands out and they keep their hands out. You're going to pull that top hand into your body. And that's really what creates the leverage. And you'll notice that, and I'll just go to here, you'll notice that if you are doing these steps correctly, the puck and the ice creates the flex on the stick if you're, if you're pulling in you don't have to lean on the stick to create the flex on the stick. And let's look at a few other examples of that. Um, one of my favorites is with Sebastian Ajo here, where if you look, notice how there's like n hardly any pressure being put down on the stick, hardly any at all, but just simply by having that blade leg behind, pulling that top hand in, Look at all that flex that gets created on that stick. And so that's pretty cool visual right there. I've, I love this camera angle because it really shows that the puck and ice is, and that leg is what really creates the flex on the stick. You don't have to lean into the stick to, to create that. Now, the other part is this whole um, pulling the top hand into your body, chest, or hip. Um, here's a really great look at um, Eichel, and you can see exactly where his hand pulls in. So notice he's on a one-timer here. Notice how far his top hand comes and comes like almost into almost to his back. It's like almost in his back hip pocket. Um, and so that just goes to show you the importance of really pulling that top hand back in. So the critical part, and I really love this example for it, is that you start with 
that uh, puck on the forehand, right? And the, the blade legs on the ice as your hands reach out, right? And what you can see is there's that lag here. The puck legs on, or the, the blade legs on the ice and behind the puck. And then there's that really important pull in, and that's where your leverage really gets created. And again, pay attention to where Marshawn has his hand. It's, again, almost in his back hip. Uh, and that's how much pulling the, the top hand in is super, super important. So just to review here, your key with this cue of grabbing the ice is leverage. And if you're using the ice and puck to give you leverage, then stick flex happens naturally, thanks to the new stick technology. And your cue is to let your blade leg behind your hands, just like Pedersen does here. So your coaching for this week here is with your floorball stick, and I always recommend floorball sticks for shooting, test this leg cue, right? So you want to use the cue, let your blade lag behind your hands. And you want to do 100 shots each. You want to do three sets throughout this week, getting ready for, for week four. And ask yourself, what do you notice? How does this, how does this feel when you let the, bla the blade lag behind your hands? And what you want to do too is you want to film at least three reps, post the Train 2.0 Facebook group, review it yourself, or have another coach review it. And you're or where we are going to go over the footwork for explosive rotation. So, uh, you know, you can't shoot a cannon out of a canoe. And so we're going to go over the, the footwork that's going to allow you to use what you've learned in weeks one through three to really unleash unleash a nasty shot and that's part of the slingshot shooting system so to find out more you can click the link uh, otherwise we'll see you next week in week four thanks for watching